Chakramary tooth disease, also known as hereditary motor and sensory neuropathies, is an entity that was first described in 1886 by Jean-Marie Charcot and Pierre-Marie from France, as well as Howard Henry Tooth from England, thus the name Chakramary tooth disease. It is a disease that causes injury to the peripheral nerves and affects both the motor and sensory peripheral nerves, and thus manifests as distal, limb weakness and sensory loss. The peripheral nerves are the nerves that bring information in and out of the central nervous system, which is your spinal cord and your brain over here. Here you can see a peripheral nerve coming out of the spinal cord. The peripheral nerves are made up of sensory and motor neurons. The sensory neurons bring information into the central nervous system and the motor neurons supply the muscles of our body. Myelin is essentially an insulator that uh, wraps around the neurons to help speed up the signals that are transmitted through the neurons. Charcot-Marie tooth disease is an inherited familial disorder with many gene mutations identified. Clinically, however, we will focus on five important ones. And in each of these cases of Charcot-Marie tooth disease, it's usually either predominantly a demyelinating issue, so loss of myelin, or loss of axons, an axonal loss picture. Charcot-Marie tooth type 1 is the most common and is the demyelinating subtype. It causes injury to the myelin sheath, the stuff that wraps around the neurons, as I mentioned, to speed up the signals. This is caused by mutation of PMP22 on chromosome 17, or less often MP2 on chromosome 1, about 5%. Charcot-Marie tooth type 2 is the axonal subtype, where you have loss of axons, which means you lose the neurons, essentially, in the peripheral nerve. And this really causes a reduction in strength of the signals that are transmitted through the neurons. Charcot-Marie tooth type 3 is also known as degerin sota's disease. Charcot-Marie tooth type 4 is inherited in a recessive manner, typically autosomal recessive. Finally, Charcot-Marie tooth 1X, or X, is really a type where it is X-linked inheritance. So usually only males manifest the disease. The clinical manifestation of Charcot-Marie tooth disease, just broadly speaking, it is a slowly progressive condition where you get weakness that begins in the lower legs usually and then gradually moves up the limbs. Thus, it's a neuropathy. You get motor and sensory neuropathy, which causes a distal symmetrical weakness, wasting muscle, hyporeflexia or areflexia, and associated skeletal deformities. As a result of this, there is, you know, children often develop delayed motor milestones. As the weakness progresses, patients develop foot drop. They're unable to elevate their foot, and so a high-stepping gait. They also develop neuropathic pain. As a result of progressive weakness and sensory loss, you get deformities of the skeleton. You get what's called pescavus, basically a high arched foot, hammer toes, and clawing of the hands. And these are usually in patients with long-standing disease due to weakness of the intrinsic muscles. Patients also get wasting of legs and distal thighs, and this may seem like an inverted champagne bottle appearance. Spinal deformities, people can also get scoliosis or kyphosis. And finally, uh, in Chakramary tooth, often patients have the palpable thickened nerve. The palpable thickened nerve can be found in certain areas of our body, including the elbows, the thigh, as well as the tibia. Important causes of thickened nerves include, as mentioned, Charcot-Marie tooth disease, which is a hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy, acromegaly, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, amyloidosis, leprosy, sarcoidosis, and neurofibromatosis. So all these conditions can also cause a thickened palpable nerve. It is important to understand that Charcot-Marie tooth disease is a motor and sensory polyneuropathy. It causes distal weakness and sensory changes, which gradually moves up as it worsens. This is as opposed to a radiculopathy, which affects a particular nerve root at the spinal cord. 
such as a disc herniation causing impingement of the nerve root L4. A plexopathy affects the whole plexus, such as the lumbosacral plexus, so multiple nerve roots are affected, as shown in this diagram. A mononeuropathy, which is again different, affects only one peripheral nerve, such as the common fibular nerve causing the foot drop. Mononeuritis multiplex involves inflammation of multiple peripheral nerves in an asymmetric manner, such as the common perineal nerve and the left median nerve. Now, because Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is a sensory and a motor polyneuropathy, it is important to think about other differential diagnoses, including diabetes, alcoholism, vitamin B12 deficiency, paraproteinemia, uremic neuropathy, and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Investigations to order... Uh, investigations and the diagnosis of Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is really based on family history and genetic testing. You can also perform nerve conduction studies, which can either show a reduction in uh, velocity, which indicates demyelination, or a reduction in amplitude, which indicates axonal loss. A nerve biopsy is sometimes performed, and what you see is repeated demyelination and remyelination event in large nerve fibers. This is uh, also known as the onion peel appearance. And finally, investigations to order also uh, involve to those that will rule out other differentials, such as HbA1c for diabetes, vitamin B12 levels, as well as a lumbar puncture to look for chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. There is no treatment that can stop the progression of the disease. And so usually... The treatment is supportive, wearing braces to help correct foot drops or thoses, for example, walking aids such as a walking stick. Sometimes orthopedic surgery is needed to stabilize the foot. Occupational therapy and physiotherapy plays a big role in the management of patients with Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. So in summary, Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is a hereditary sensory and motor polyneuropathy that causes over time progressive weakness and sensory loss, and skeletal deformities involving the foot and the hands. There is no treatment to stop progression of the disease, and so treatment focuses on supportive care. Thank you for watching.